over two millennia, the whole thing has plunged millions upon millions of believers into boundless loss of orientation in terms of knowledge and truth, resulting not only in many wars, degeneracies and evil of all kinds, but also destroying millions of human lives, in many cases due to the delusion, the lies and the falsifications of Christianity and all other religions and sects. All this taken together also resulted in a huge and deeply rooted fear of life that has been increased by the terrible obsessions related to the fear of death that have been brought about by Christianity and the other religions. The most insane of all religions is Christianity which goes so far as to claim that what it describes as the Son of God, Jesus, will at some time be bodily reborn. In early Christianity, it was even claimed that this would take place very soon after Jesus' death, which would apparently also have an impact on the dead who had believed in him. For this reason, in antiquity, Thousands upon thousands of routing corpses were actually hoarded in the living areas of houses, which as could be expected, led to catastrophic plagues, as is known from ancient Rome in particular. Later, Christian theologians proclaimed the second coming of Christ and the resurrection of the dead on doomsday at the end of time, and thereby shifted the fulfillment of the entire deception and absurdity to some imaginary day which will never come. However, this in turn had the effect that instead of hoarding corpses, other insane and abnormal aberrations came about such as the imbecilic and widespread cult of relics which swamps the whole of Christianity down to this day as it does other religions and sects. This involves not only overwhelming the believers with apparently genuine, but in fact false, artifacts of people who have been elevated to the status of founders of the religion but also with purported body parts of obscure saints and martyrs. This terrible state of affairs is also exacerbated by Chandlers, who, claiming to be chosen ones, talk to Christ, God, Mary the mother of Jesus, Joseph the father of Jesus, Peter Pio or any other dead saints and the like, claiming to be in contact with them and receiving messages. The entire imbecilic procedure is promoted further by the so-called hallowed ones or chastened ones who appeared and filled the heads of the believers full to the brim with nonsense by calling forth stigma to or the five wounds of Christ on their bodies as a result of their broken psyche or straightforward self-mutilation. This is however also the case with regard to apparent castings out of devils and demons or evocations of the devil or exorcism by Catholic priests and other believers in devils and demons, as a result of which human beings with very serious physic injuries and aroused psychic slash physical states were often maltreated, even unto death. Christianity also intervened in life after death as a result of which believers have lapsed into horrendous obsessions ever since the existence of the Catholic Church. This involves a strict denial of the rebirth of the spirit form, and representing the other world as a kind of limbo named purgatory and as the actual hell. In opposition to this, heaven was invented with, apparently, a god in residence to welcome all those into his kingdom who piously danced according to his tune. And with regard to this psychotic fantasy, the Christian religion as well as sex and certain other religions maintain that heaven is something like the ultimate destination of human life. However, anyone who fundamentally sins against the Christian belief and everything connected with it would be doomed to an eternity in hell, to undergo endless and terrible agonies of torture there. On the other hand, all human beings who die except for the saints are not able to enter heaven directly, because each must first be purified in purgatory, a process taking millions of years, in order to be refined through agonies less intense than those of hell in order to become worthy for heaven and to obtain heavenly purity. If one takes a look at this entire Christian religious nonsense, it is apparent that the entire thing reveals itself to be nothing more than an extraordinarily underdeveloped attitude of the consciousness, something which only a sick human brain could have developed. 
any human being who looks at the relevant religious writings of Christianity and of the other religions and sects having an equivalent or similar stance will undoubtedly recognize, providing he or she possesses clear rationality and is capable of understanding that the authors and proponents of all this senselessness are and were out and out psychopaths who transferred their own irrational fears and delusions into their morbidly stupid and primitive, false, idiotic and incomprehensible false teachings. Seen in their entirety in this way, the religious and sectarian teachings of life and of the last things of all existence are not only one great misunderstanding, but also an all-embracing evil lie that is leading humanity into confusion, has resulted in innumerable human beings straying into confusion and far from the truth, vegetating in their unknowing about this falsehood. This is because the false teachings of religions and sects, of philosophies and ideologies have given them a completely incorrect and fearful attitude to life and the effect of truth, as well as to the real creational laws and recommendations. In this way, all religions and sects, all philosophies and ideologies as well as all human beings who depend on them have simply failed to understand the true sense of the truth. All you human beings of sound rationality and good intentions are called upon to face the fundamental conflict between good and evil as well as to generosity, and to place yourselves on the side of the positive, progress and therefore of goodness and life. And all you human beings of earth who have the courage to fight against evil, negativity and degeneracy must provide help through your sharp rationality and your intellect, through love, peace freedom and harmony, and only use these as weapons. Solely through these weapons will you prevail against all the rife contempt for humankind and destructive madness that is hostile towards life, as is held by all those human beings of earth who have lapsed into evil, gewalt, materialism, capitalism as well as degenerate and inhumane things. Resist all degeneracies that are threatening life and all existence, and resist everything evil today, in the present and in every future, because this is the only way that you will be able to bring about a healthy change in all regards. Never bow down to evil, but undertake everything in kind-heartedness, righteousness, fairness and everything permitted in accordance with the creational laws and recommendations and their truth, so that you will be capable of finally defeating the negative and evil principle. Do it always in respect and honor of life, even if you suffer terrible setbacks. Hold firm to your knowledge about the effective truth of the validity of the creational laws and recommendations. Teach love, peace, freedom and harmony which is the way that you should live. Fight for this truth just like all the true prophets of all times and like all those human beings who have done this over millennia for the truth and for life and who also do it today and will do it tomorrow and in every future, even if the successes were or are only slight but constant dripping wears the stone, as has been the motto for this since time immemorial. Over the course of time, humanity and democratic societies have been achieved and implemented through the peaceful struggle of human beings in accordance with rationality and truth, just as many human rights and other values have been. These are palpable and recognizable results by people who have fought for them for millennia and continue to do so. And if earthly humanity is currently standing as if in mockery close to the abyss of the destruction of all things, then it is precisely in this current epoch that the opportunity for radical change and victory in the struggle presents itself, although this will require the human beings of earth finally to decide for the good, the positive for the things that make life worth living and for life itself. The truth is that the third millennium presents a new opportunity in the firmament of fate that will cast out the darkness of past millennia of war and convey the future in a brilliant light. To achieve this, it is only necessary to seize the opportunity to heed the teaching of the prophets, to live according to the goblet of truth which even the Celtic Druids called the goblet of life and cauldron of life, 